Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we have a couple of interesting topics but first we're gonna start with Cedric McMillan and a physique update of him. The last time he updated us he didn't really look like much, he didn't look like himself at his best, not even close. I mean it was due to an injury because he had a broken collarbone and also some bones in his hand so he wasn't able to train for a while and then he got back into training and this was him after you know a couple of months of not training and then starting again so considering that he looked good but like is this physique looking like uh, Arnold Classic winning physique, Mr. Olympia winning physique I mean, Cedric did win the Arnold Classic and he was in a lot of conversations of winning the Mr. Olympia if he pulled it together, if he came conditioned. Did I feel like that? Did I feel like he could have won the Mr. Olympia? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Just take a look at this. 2012 New York Pro, in my opinion, his best ever. Maybe not the best conditioning ever, his glutes weren't exactly in, but overall he was full, he was hard, he was conditioned and the shape. The shape? Guys, look at this shape, this is like, this is arguably the most, the, the most aesthetically pleasing shape in bodybuilding ever, all time. And this guy is about my height, so I always looked up to him. I know, I, there is no chance I can be this big ever, I don't have the genetics, but this is something I dreamt of and I still do, I would still love to look like this, I'm striving for it, I know it's not gonna happen, but I still would love to look like this and this is basically a perfect physique if you ask me. If only his glutes were a little bit more straight and a little bit drier, this would be a Mr. Olympia winning physique. But I mean, today, you know, since 2018, 19, 20, 2021, uh, back in the day, this was 2012, and those were really good years in bodybuilding. You had Phil Heath and Kai Green top two, and uh, even though Cedric was absolutely amazing, had crazy muscle bellies, a lot of muscle, and even if he came super crisp, I still don't think he would be able to beat Phil Heath, because Phil Heath is just built different, <laughs> you know, he had so much muscle, so much crazy cr craziness going on in his physique, he was so round, so bubbly, so, so full, so insane, so I don't think Cedric would have beaten Phil Heath, but today he would have been a Mr. Olympia if he was like this, a little bit sharper to the glutes, that would have been a Mr. Olympia winning physique for sure, so he did have the potential. Unfortunately, we will not see him at the Arnold Classic this year, as he says the doctors are not allowing him to compete because he still didn't heal up properly. And now, at this point, at three, three weeks out of Arnold Classic, he does look much better than the last time he made an update. So he looks bigger, he looks rounder, he looks harder. I think he's getting back to his old shape. But as of right now, he's not exactly quite there. Is that guy now that he has? Anyways, uh, he looks better, but still this is not the Cedric McMillan, as far as I can see, I mean, I don't really see a lot in this video, but I can still get the idea, I'm sure you guys can as well, that uh, he looked better at certain times. So, yes, he looks improved, and it's really a shame that we won't see him at the Arnold Classic, and if he competed, he would probably look better at this point, he would probably push things more, you know, not just training and eating, but gear as well. Right now, he looks better than the last time, but is this the best Cedric of all time? No. Is he gonna be able to get to his best again? Or is his career over? Is he too old now? I don't know, but I get the impression that we won't get to see uh, Cedric at his full potential, as we were hoping, you know, the full potential Cedric can win the Mr. Olympia, but I think those days are done, I think he lost the passion, lost the fire, I don't think he has it anymore psychologically, and I also don't think that he has it physically, so I think Cedric McMillan is probably done as far as the potential Mr. Olympia winner, that's probably not gonna happen. And you know, even though it's sad to see a bodybuilder never really fulfill his maximum potential, it's fine, I mean, he gave his best, he looked really good, but now it is time for the new crop of guys, and right here you can see Ian Valier at three weeks out of Arnold Classic, looking absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look at how dry this guy is, and that's the craziest thing about his physique, as he keeps competing, show after show. He just looks more and more crisp, drier and drier, though he doesn't lose the fullness, the size. He still looks round and big, like, like, like crazy, 
and at the same time he keeps losing the, the, the little body fat that he has. I don't know how he's even managing to get leaner, especially maintaining this kind of size. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Look at the back lat spread, it's one of his weakest poses, it's probably his weakest pose along with the abs and thighs, but it looks great, here at least this lighting. Um, front lat, it used to be his weak pose because of the chest, the chest still does look pretty shallow, but it looks better and overall the pose, the way he hits it now, it's one of his best poses. Side tricep along with a quarter turn, his best pose, and most muscular, now he does it this way, it's, uh, I don't know, it shows a lot of detail. I'm not sure if it is the best way for him, but it does look good, it does look impressive. He's showing a lot of ab detail as well, and his chest looks super straight, and he's showing quad separation, so yeah, an amazing pose for him. As you can see in the comments, Regan Grimes is giving him 5th spot, top 5 in Mr. Olympia, but how well will he do at the Arnold Classic? Well, in my prediction video, if you guys didn't catch it, I gave him 3rd. I actually am expecting Steve Kuklo to edge him out, to work harder than he did he did for Texas and to improve enough to actually take Ian out. I think Steve has a little bit better structure, they have about a similar kind of muscle, but uh, the rate that Ian is getting crisp at, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not so sure right now. I mean, the, the entire lineup at the Arnold Classic is completely wild, I have actually no idea what is gonna happen, I gave you my best guess, but any other outcome is possible, really. I wouldn't be too surprised if the guys that I'm not even having in my top 7 win the show, it's possible, like Lionel Biecki, he can come peel to the bone by some magic, I don't know how, but it can happen and he can win the show, probably not gonna happen though, but you know, it's a possibility, same thing goes with Hassan. So, right now, again, based on what we saw so far, I think uh, Ian is pretty safe in that top 3, actually, at the Arnold Classic. Could he win the show against Bonac and Kuklo? I don't know, it's not impossible, it's definitely not impossible, as I said, anything is possible. Here in these poses, I mean, in these poses, in, in a side tricep here and this quarter turn, it, it, transition, you can see his glutes, they are dry, desert dry, as he says, desert freaking dry, he is getting peeled, shredded, and, and it's just ridiculous, the skin structure just looks ridiculous. So Ian, one of the most conditioned guys in bodybuilding today, and also one of the biggest, one of the freakiest. But no, definitely not freakier and not bigger than the champ, the Mr. Olympia winner, Big Remy, who is in the United States, as you guys know already, and now he's training with Dennis James, and this is a photo that he posted, so he says I'm back in Arizona and we'll continue where we left off, the workouts are hard, but I love it, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes, let the fun begin. So it seems like Remy is driven, he wants it, he wants it again, and Dennis James is not gonna go easy on him, he is going to push him to the max as far as workouts, and he is going to absolutely crush him as far as posing. That's what he did to him last year, and it really helped in Big Remy winning that show, it really helped a lot. So as I said, he's in the US right now, he's training hard, and as you can see, he is doing some cardio right here in this video, and this is as close as we're gonna get to a physique update of Big Remy at this point, and you can take a look at his legs. Now, do his legs look super conditioned? Do his legs look lean? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, the quality of this video is very poor, but I think my assessment as far as his conditioning in his lower body can be pretty accurate, because here you can just see that his legs don't look vascular, they're not showing any separation, you can see some skin folding over there. Yes, he probably trained legs before this, and once you pump your legs up, nobody can really look conditioned in that area when there is a lot of blood in there, unless you're co completely shredded, but Big Remy at this point, at 5 weeks out, is not going to be completely shredded. So, he's probably training very hard, he's doing cardio, he's getting there, his plan is to be conditioned again. What you can see here is his face, and his face does look pretty chiseled, it looks pretty lean. So maybe my assessment about the legs is not that accurate, maybe just, you know, the, the, the poor shadow uh, quality of the video and stuff like that, because his face does look lean. It looks like a diet face, it looks like a death face, a lot of lines over there, and Big Remy, when he's not in shape, you can see it in his face. When he is conditioned, 
you can definitely see his face get chiseled like this. So I think this tells me that he's on the right path as far as conditioning. And boom, for the end we have an update of Keon Pearson, who is going to be competing at Mr. Olympia in 212 in about 5 weeks now, and he looks absolutely ridiculous. Now, Mr. Olympia is in 5 weeks, and he said that he is saving himself for the Mr. Olympia. He did not want to get too lean before, still he was able to win a show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but now he is going to give it all of his, and he's going to try to get super dry, super conditioned, crisp, with this shape, with this structure, as long as he doesn't lose too much fullness in the chest, which is a problem of Kian, probably the only problem. His chest is a little bit too shallow, though he did gain a lot of mass in that area. He is a genetic monster, like, you don't really get to have much better genetics than this. And also, he had a weak body part, a really weak body part, his chest. He trained it hard, and he improved it. Now it's, it's, it's hardly even a weak body part for him, but if it once was, it will probably show when he gets super flat, it will probably flatten out his chest, him being super conditioned. So as long as he can keep the fullness to a decent level, and he can get crisp and conditioned, he can actually challenge guys like Sean Clarida. Can he beat Sean Clarida? It's really hard to say, I don't know, I don't think so. I think Sean just has too much mature muscle, he just has so much so much graininess, so much density. I think Kian is uh, still a little bit too, too streamlined. I think he needs to add more tissue over the tissue, you know, just to make it look more grainy, more, more you know, just more thick, more dense. If he can do that over the years, then yeah, sure. But maybe even this year with this shape, because he just has insane proportions. And if he gets conditioned with all this mass and this shape, I can see him winning the Mr. Olympia. But realistically, I do have him in like top, top five for sure, maybe even top three this year. But you guys tell me, what do you think? How well will he do at the Mr. Olympia? Can he win? Anyways, guys, whatever is on your mind, tell me in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And for more bodybuilding updates and all kinds of bodybuilding videos, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.